Data nerds, Microsoft just released Copilot, an AI assistant powered by OpenAI's most powerful model. It allows you to use natural language to interact with the most popular Microsoft apps. I've been putting it through some tests, so we're gonna be going over everything you need to know for it. And mainly, I wanna find out if this is just an over-glorified Clippy. Back in November, Microsoft had a keynote event. And that's what brings us here today. That's why today we're announcing Copilot, our vision for everyday AI companion for you. And this AI companion would be integrated into all the leading apps from Microsoft. So let's say your boss tasks you to do some ad hoc analysis. Well, first in Excel, you can use Copilot to dive into the data. It can generate some new columns that your boss probably never heard of. So he thinks you're thinking outside the box. From there, it can either generate one graph for that new column or take it a step further and do multiple graphs for all the data. So now that Copilot found your problem, now you need to get an action plan together. Inside of Word, you can have it generate a day-by-day -day plan of how you plan to accomplish this task that you're never actually gonna do. You can even generate some cute pictures pictures of you and your coworkers to make it seem like you enjoy your job. But a project isn't official until it has a PowerPoint. So you feed that Word document into PowerPoint and Copilot gets to work generating the slides for your plan of action. Man, you're gonna be a hero. So finally, we need to tell everybody how great you are. We can draft an email summarizing all Copilots, I mean your work. It can even rewrite it if you're a little too harsh. You've got mail. Now the final step is to share your insights in order to solidify your dominance. By the way, don't you just love when nobody turns on their camera? Now when Isaiah arrives late, like he always does. He no longer has to look like a fool. Instead, he can just ask Copilot what happened so far in the meeting. After the meeting, all the different insights are summarized. Not only are key topics broken down, but also follow-up tasks that you assigned your coworkers. So now you have backup from Copilot when they don't deliver on what they say we're gonna do. And this is pretty great. I can not only automate all those different tedious tasks that I'm doing day to day, but also I can shift some of my workload strategically to my coworkers. So let's shift gears and get into what is actually available with these Copilot subscriptions. Copilot Pro was the one that was recently released and comes with a $20 a month price tag. It has access to the same things as the free version, including the ability to use Copilot, which is kind of confusing with the name that they're using, hey. but it's basically ChatGPT. This bad boy allows free access to OpenAI's most advanced model, GPT-4. Well, at least during non-peak times. Additionally, with Copilot Pro, you have access to it in Outlook, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and OneNote. Now, the one thing I was blown away with this is that these apps are not limited to the Windows only versions. Instead, you can also use it on the Mac versions and even the iPad versions. Now for organizations, they have Copilot for Microsoft 365, which was what was released back in November. However, at that time, they had a minimum requirement to get 300 licenses. So with this release, they announced that Copilot for Microsoft 365 is now generally available for small businesses, and it comes in at $30 per person per month. They're also announcing they're, they're removing that ridiculous requirement to have 300 seat minimums, which would cost you around $13,000. Now for Copilot for Microsoft 365, you get it some extra features. You get Copilot Teams, Microsoft Graph, and enterprise grade data protection. Now what's cool about Microsoft Graph is it connects and maps all your different data across all your different apps within Microsoft. Access to this by Copilot allows it to be even more powerful in streamlining insights that may be connected across different applications. Now for data protection, Microsoft says this, when you're signed into Copilot with Microsoft Ultra ID, you get commercial data protection for free, which means chat data isn't saved, Microsoft has no eyes on access, and your data isn't used to train the model. So this is great for organizations when they're dealing with confidential and secure data. But when you're talking about an individual using Copilot Pro, still not safe, it sounds like, to put this confidential data into. Now, the very last thing included in these paid subscriptions is customization, that you're able to build customized chatbots on top of any solution. And this is very similar to ChatGPT's GPTs, that you're able to build customized chatbots on top of any solution. Now, for Copilot Pro, this actually isn't available yet, and it's gonna have its own app called Copilot GPT Builder. But for organizations, this is gonna be available through Copilot Studio, which seems like it's more powerful in building GPTs than OpenAI's option. All right, let's actually get into doing some hands-on testing of Copilot. And for this, we're gonna be doing in one of the apps that I'm most skeptical about it performing well in, and that's Microsoft Excel. Now I purchased Copilot Pro and applied it to my active subscription that I'm mooching off my brother for using his family plan. After processing it, it directed me to the Copilot app, which I could care less about. When I booted up Copilot for the first time, Copilot was nowhere to be found. After some research on forums, I found out that I had to go into my account information and click 
update license. Then once I restarted Excel, it was right there. Now with this preview version of Copilot launch, it prompted me to go through an example, which it provided me this fictitious data set that I can now go into analyzing. I used a suggested prompt of show data insights and it generated this visualization on revenue. It opened this analysis in a new sheet, not only providing the pivot table that it did for the analysis, but also the pivot chart. The most impressive thing was this suggested prompt of add all insights to grid. And it was able to generate six highly engaging yet very suspicious graphs. These things were a little too good. So I wanted to test it out on my own data. All right, so let's start with this data set on data science job postings. And in it, I have over a million different jobs. So there's a good amount of data to test the limits of Copilot. Now, one quick note, Microsoft was a little slimy in that in order to use Copilot, you have to have your files either saved in OneDrive or SharePoint. You can't work with local files. So contrary to my normal work practice, I had to upload this to the cloud. Anyway, let's dive into this data. The first thing to note is it only works with Excel tables, so we have to convert it. So now that it's in a table, it looks like Copilot is now picking up on all this different data and providing suggestions. So let's just try out the first prompt of showing data insights. And I'm already noticing that it's pretty buggy and really, really slow. All right, so I'm already running to my first issue of Copilot not generating a response to my prompt. Now, I don't think that these issues have to deal with my computer because Copilot should be running technically in the cloud. Right now, I'm using about 50% of memory and I am on a MacBook Pro. So I'm having to use a virtual machine in order to run Windows and thus run Excel and Copilot. And this virtual machine has 16 gigabytes of memory set up for it. And I think that should be more than enough to do these type of operations. So we're gonna go with a smaller data set. I have this one on Kaggle on data analysis job postings. And if we scroll on down to it, it has a lot of different stuff for job postings, but mainly it's about 40,000 different job postings. So a lot smaller data set. All right, so I got the smaller data set loaded in, but I'm still having issues with this. Copilot is just thinking and thinking and thinking. One eternity later. All right, so I've been fumble. Copilot for the past hour trying to get to work. And I finally figured out I can't put in a gigantic data set into it. Right now I'm working with around 500 rows of data. I tried it at like 5,000, 10,000, even 40,000, and none of those were able to work. Copilot basically just locked up. Anyway, the first thing I did was ask it to show a data insight. And it found this because I have salary data and also the type of job, whether it's full-time, part-time, or contract had it added to a new sheet. And it found this pretty interesting insight actually, that part-time gets paid more than full-time and gets paid more than contract. Now it seems like the main way that Copilot is actually working and doing a lot of this analysis is through pivot tables and pivot visualizations or pivot graphs. And that seems to be the main method of it actually working. Previously when Microsoft demonstrated this, they were showing that it was gonna be working through their Python functionality that they inserted into Excel. And from what I'm testing so far, this is not true. So let's actually provide it some guided tasking. I'm gonna have it analyze the salary column in this data set. So it provides me this, basically showing the average salary from this column, even though I asked for a visualization. So I asked it more specifically to provide me a histogram of the salary yearly column and it looks like it generated this. Let's check it out. And not too bad. This graph is looking bland looking, so I prompted that make the histogram of salary yearly more visually appealing. I had to specify the column because it keeps on trying to make graphs of other columns. Anyway, it looks like it made this new one, which looks exactly the same. Okay, great. I guess the one major problem with Copilot that I'm having is this. With that generated example that it came up with, with the data that it provided, and then also the ability to provide those multiple different visualizations, it was able to do this with the data it provided. But whenever I provided my data, it cannot do this. Now, I also tried to use Copilot in other products like Word and PowerPoint. In Word, I asked it to generate an essay around Microsoft Excel, and it provided three pages of pretty in-depth analysis of Microsoft Excel, which if I were to ask ChatGPT this, it wouldn't provide me near as much. Reading through it, it seems like it has a lot of up-to-date information, referencing that there's 750 million Excel users. Then to complement my essay, I used Copilot to design a presentation on how great Microsoft Excel is. This one I was a little bit less impressed with because it seemed like it needed some work with the format. But regardless, it looks like it's actually a good starting point to get going with building out a further presentation. All right, so overall, I'm liking what I'm seeing with this integration of Copilot inside of these different Microsoft apps. I am, however, disappointed in performance of Microsoft Excel. Specifically, I wasn't able to recreate a lot of the different functionality that Microsoft has shown in YouTube videos. But more importantly, I'm most concerned about the data limit limitations that Copilot has in that I had to limit my data to around 500 rows 
to get Copilot to even work. But I will call out these big letters right next to Copilot is that it is in its preview version. So it's only going to get better and I'll be making more videos on it as it does. All right, as always, if you got value out of this video, smash that like button. And with that, I'll see you in the next one.